What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode 120 of the Offshore Games Cast. My name is Dave. And I am Dylan. Also, Dave. No, there's only one Dave and there's no Lyle. Well, no, it's because I'm Spider-Man and that you're also Spider-Man. And that means we're both Dave. Because you don't have to be something else. I don't know of a... I know of a Spider-Man named Peter? And I know of a Spider-Man named Miles. Yeah, they're both Spider-Man, so we're both Dave. That's... I. That would work. That's like saying Peter Parker is Peter and Miles is Spider-Man. Therefore, Miles is Peter. <laughs> It, well, Dave is the superhero here. <clears throat> uh, uh, well, mm, uh, we clean up porta potties. That's our super. That's our superpower. We don't. No, we we don't do anything. I don't know what you're doing. That we do. We don't but, do that. But in between cleaning up our our nightly duties, uh, we I have played. <laughs> did you play Spider Man? I have not. I bought it. I downloaded it, and it's done nothing. It's downloaded. That's something. It's, yeah. I played it and beat it. And I I, I had a pretty decent time with it. Uh, so, you know, I, I have a pretty good feeling that that's what we'll be talking about today. <laughs> I think that's kind of the point. No, I know. <laughs> but Dylan, what, what would yeah. you say we're talking about next week? Next week is our season finale. The the big year send off. It is our game of the year. The two of us and Lyle. We debate. We fight. We politic. We allow. Sometimes we sometimes allow. We compromise. That definitely happens. And we get nasty. We get real disgusting to each other. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually we have, we're gonna end up having to cut out half of it because it's just that offensive to each other. It's the first podcast episode rated A for all? actually something that I don't know if I want to listen to. Whoa, whoa, it's a lot. So that's December seventh. You can hear our our stuff, all of our categories and our top ten, uh, and you can go to the website ultragamescast dot com next week. And you will see all of the lovely guest posts that will be coming in. Thank you to everybody. Ooh, you're welcome. Thank you too, Dylan. You're everybody. I, I I am a narcissist, so I think so. This is true. Um, but let's not talk about you for one minute. Well, let's talk <sighs> about Spider Man. Ah, uh, well, Sp I'm Spider Man, and so am I. But I'm not Dave. No, no, unfortunately. I was fortunately sure. so Spider-Man yep. mm -hmm. was developed by Insomniac who made Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, published by Sony who published Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, and it came out October 20th 2023 on the PlayStation 5 only no PC yet and it'll no happen previous gen it'll happen that won't happen, I don't think. No. And I feel like the easiest thing to say about this game is that it's one of those safe sequels. There isn't really too, too much different. They add a little bit onto it. You get the extra, you know, half, you know, two thirds of a map <clears throat> with part of good old Long Island. Um, oh, it's the beginning of it. It's right over in Queens. Who, that, who well, who technically, it? it's on the island, but it's not Long Island. Ah, it's technically. It's you're, you're, technically you it's just on crossed, it. You just crossed the Throgs Neck. Here you are. You just crossed the GW. Here you are. But it ain't Long Island. Hey, it ain't much, but it's home. <laughs> uh, uh, not for much um, longer. 
I, I, I will say just the couple of things <clears throat> that are added to just, you know, the base traversal and when it comes to the side activities are not only much better than what was offered in the first game, but add a, a little breath of life into, into what you're doing. The, the big, <clears throat> the big add on would be the web wings, which you get, you get pretty early on. And those become those Batman. Are, they're, they're fun. They're a good old time. I mean, you're not really gliding around nearly as long. There, There's numerous little spots around the city that are like air ducts that give you bursts of air that if you fly over them, they'll shoot you up and let you glide for much longer. There's also these like wind tunnels that you can hit. And for the most part, once you get inside one, you don't really have to use the controller too much. You, you're just kind of like in it you can still like maneuver and like pop out at any point, but you, you could just kind of go wherever you want. As soon as you pop in, there's also a trophy for getting from like one part of the map to complete the other side without touching the ground and only wings or whatchamacallit. That was fun. Is, are the wind tunnels just like the, the smoke columns that are coming out of random holes in new york city that no one knows what they're for but they're just there i mean they're always there but it, it's not that there's just like a bunch of random like wind gusts around the city that you use to boost you all right but it's not the smoke the random smoke bombs that are always going off no no those are still there though because it wouldn't be the city without it nope no um i think the other big thing is that, I mean, at free points during the game, you could just switch back and forth between Miles and Peter whenever you want. GTA 5. Pretty much, but in a much faster, faster state. I mean, they, they talked about it before release, how insane the PS5 can handle loading screens and being able to travel from one part of the map to another. Not only for that, but switching characters so fast. And they say like the so how it works is you choose whichever point of the map that you want to go to. And it's sort of as you hold the button down to select where you want to go, it sort of auto corrects where you originally put the dot to an accessible place where you can fast travel because it sort of goes into this animation where you web winging and then you can swing from there or continue to web wing gives you freedom from that point. Uh, but it centers you down an available path in order to do that animation. And it's not like it's a problem or anything. Just found it interesting. Sounds like it's a problem. But I mean, with how fast you're, you're changing, it's barely noticeable. Um, but it's, 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 it's a lot of fun in many ways. And I feel like the, the biggest part where it falls might just be how long it stays and where it decides to pace itself at certain points of the narrative i think a lot of the gameplay when it comes to not only the swinging the fighting the combat and just the general side activities are better i think i think the the narrative and the story are just fine and I feel like this is a game that was really hyped up and excited to be something exciting and crazy, especially when it came to the narrative. And I don't know if it's one of those things where it's like maybe they were focusing more so on not only having Spider-Man as a big release, but working on Wolverine at the same time and not necessarily having the full amount of their resources to focus on one game before transferring and whatnot. But it feels like the main story at least is cut into weird weirdly length acts where you have craven as a focus venom as a focus and you kind of have the transition period in between and it feels like for the first almost more than half the game you're just chilling with craven and there's not a single talk of venom like really anywhere Besides the fact of like Harry is starting to get better, the symbiote that you see at the end of the first game and the cutscene is working on him and like keeping him going. And obviously, as you progress through the story, you learn more about it and how it's affecting him and 
as it goes. Um, but the main plot focus, at least, is Craven for a very strong part of like more than half the game before Venom really makes an appearance. And I keep making the comparison that Venom is like the Lady Dimitrisk of the game, where it's super heavily marketed and it was just a couple mm. hours section of the game. And and a lot of people are frustrated too because even certain of the sections where you have the ability to tr- play as like true Venom in so- whatever sort of free roam, it's extremely limited and there's really not much you can do. It's it's very cinematic and gimmicky in in the way that it presents itself. I feel. St- I mean, in in its moments are still extremely high points and it, are fun and exciting, but I, it feels much more condensed at the same time um and i feel like another thing too is uh before i go crazy and continue to ramble what 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 would you like to say well i if i remember right wasn't it advertised there was some sort of trailer that showed peter with the symbiote yeah so okay so the, I a was... big part of the story with whatever symbi- symbiote, whenever it plays a part, the, a, a part of the arc is always attaching itself to Peter and seeing what happens. Right. I was wondering how they were going to handle that with the game. But it sounds like it's handled by it not being as big of a focus as I as thought it would be. Not as much. It starts off with Craven just kind of hunting around the jungle and being like, this this price sucks and this dude comes over with his like brand new ipad air and he's like showing a map of the city new york city and all these little icons popping up a black cat and lizard and and spider-man and he's showing him he's like how about this boss and he's like mm, yummy and then they, they they go off to new york city and he's like this is my new prey <laughs> what a reason to be a villain yeah um so Craven heads down to the city is the main reason that Kurt, Dr. Connors, ends up becoming the lizard again. So he was already the lizard in this universe and ends up like being induced into becoming the lizard again. And Craven is basically going around the city being like, I want your... Sh-. He's he's the fucking uh, Wayne of Letterkenny. He's just like, he's just the strongest dude in town. He's like, bring me your strongest guy and I'm going to kick their fucking ass. Like, I'm only here to kill them. That's that's all he's doing until he gets to the point where he comes across the symbiote and he's like, he's in love. He's met his match. He's like, I want you to kill me so bad. Like it's, it, it's, 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 it fits for the character and it's like hysterically obsessive. So at are, the same are time. they even like out there doing evil shit or they're just like, I want to fight strong. That's what the Craven's whole thing is like, my family is weak and everyone died and I'm here to be the strongest and I'm going to kill everybody until I find the thing that's strong enough to kill me. That's his but whole shtick. He's not like terrorizing the streets in New York. Not necessarily. Like that's not his goal. He's not just out there killing random people. If random people die in the process, that's probably their fault in his eyes. But now he's just there for the bad. Uh, okay, he sounded more like a villain now. I mean, he's he's he doesn't care what happens in the in the process. He's just there for his own means, but he he's he's there to incite incite uh violence. Encyclopedias, encyclopedias. So you're pretty much doing that for a majority of the game, probably towards that ending part, like the last couple of missions with uh like the focus being on Craven is during that transition of you know the the acquiring the symbiote and and having it affect peter's personality his abilities um and then sort of watching venom grow before it detaches becomes its own thing and then has to be taken out which ends up being one of the big climactic parts of the game but it also felt so rushed it felt so fast most of those like there's only so many missions in the game already and some of them are like quick five minute cutscenes. Like that's the whole mission. You swing to a place, watch the five minute cutscene, you did the mission. Like that's like that's it. Like the and other missions are grander and they have a lot more going on, but it just felt like that pacing was off at certain points, especially with 
in the full i feel like the entirety of the story could have been so much more fleshed out like the entire craven bit was pretty fleshed out and the rest of it wasn't things were just kind of happening i wonder if it would have been better if they had the two spider-man the spider-men and one of them was like focusing on craven and the other one was focusing on venom and you were like switching back and forth between them, but they still then both got like main focuses. So that's what was happening. So on the Miles side, um, <clears throat> Mr. Negative is his big focus because he's the reason that Miles' dad's dead. Because Miles is so positive. He's so positive. He's just Mr. Negative out here. I mean, he did at one point early on end up crossing powers with Mr. Negative and being able to use some of the negative energy and like focus it. And that's where a lot of his new moves in the game comes from. Um, But his focus from the most part of the game is like, I want that guy dead. And it's it's a big arc to to see how he gets to the end point and whether or not he still feels that way by the end but a lot of the game is being able to switch back and forth mainly when it comes to free roam and doing side activities there are still certain side missions that are focused on peter or miles specifically but when it comes to the main missions it's do a couple missions as peter do this maybe switch over to miles for a couple missions do this one Peter mission, one Miles, couple back to Peter, couple back to Miles, back and forth as you go through. Um, and at, at points, you'll, you'll, I, I think there's a couple of missions where you switch um, uh, perspective of playing as which Spider Man during a mission as well. Uh, a lot of it is very fun and, and exciting. I, I feel like one of the things that was missing. Was I feel like the first one had a lot of, I don't know if it was just like charisma or, I, I feel like you would understand if I were to relate it to the, the first Spider-Man game feels like when the first Guardians movie came out, and then the second Spider-Man game is like the second Guardians movie when it came oh, out. Oh, so it's not a good game. It's a good game. It's, it's not, just, it's not, no, not if that's a comparison. It doesn't hit the same highs. It doesn't you know, feel, it doesn't feel the same. And like the most personal sense, like there was something about playing that first one and going through that story and how much it like emotionally connected. It felt like it was worked on, cared for and fleshed out. And then they were like, this was really good. We need a second one. And they had a lot of really cool ideas with it. It just doesn't hit those beats nearly as well as the first one did. It seems like it has, and this is just from what you've been saying, it seems like it had like a focus issue. I could definitely say that too. I was trying to talk about this the other night as well. I don't know what it is, but there is just something about sequels recently of some of my favorite games that have just not been hitting as well. And I feel like you can't go wrong <clears throat> with the swinging and Spider-Man and the combat it's regardless just going to be fun and a good time. But just in the overall scheme of things, like I think about um, Horizon Forbidden West, I think about Dying Light 2. I feel like there's Dead a lot Island of big 2. games. Dead Island 2 is another one. There's there's a lot of big games that have released that it's just... the twos. It don't feel the same. But for some reason, are carbon copies for the most part. It's the twos. Well, maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's, I don't know, expecting more. Mm -hmm. On top of having all of these interesting story beats, um, certain, I mean, there, there, there are things that happen in this story that have major, major ramifications on the universe going forward. I don't, do you, do you have to say them? I don't have to, but there are definitely major characters that no longer have a heartbeat. And like, that's like a, when it happened, I was like, a, oh, that's kind of, uh, I did not see that coming. That felt like I- important. 
I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I have seen the headline going around of uh, Miles Morales is going to be the Spider-Man focus moving forward for the games. So which I, immediately makes me think is Peter dying. Did, did he die in this game? Is that a that's thing? that's not what I'm f- focused on as, okay. as to what I'm speaking. Um, if you want to get into any sort of spoiler territory, um, that that is it's going to be the focus going forward is a miles centric, but Peter's still around. OK, so that wasn't because that felt it did feel weird, like seeing that headline and me thinking like, oh, does that mean Peter dies? But then also thinking there's no way that they're just like that open about that. Like he so goes soon. into like semi retirement at the end of the second game. He's like, I'm kind of tired and like I want to <laughs> do family stuff. And and Miles is like, please, 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 please. And he's like, I just don't know if I could do this all by myself right now. And like, I think it's time for you to pick up the reins. And Miles is like, please, 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 please. And, and Peter's like, I'm going to go make a sandwich, probably a BLT or something. <laughs> and, and then what for like the Miles next 12 saying, hours, please, 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 please too the next be, wanting to be the next spider-man like it's clear like oh, yeah okay. you, it's yours you it's you can have it but like that's the whole game it's like i'm spider-man i'm i am spider-man it doesn't have to be anything else i'm spider-man it's like well cool. something's it's gonna cool. happen with wolverine and peter is gonna come back into play then i mean they're supposed to be in the same universe that would be sick. yeah that's gonna um, happen i mean there's already a lot of major connections and stuff anyway so like i can only wait and see um, I don't know what crazy stuff happens too too much on. I mean, the Miles side besides Mister Negative. I do have a question, which is getting ahead of ourselves because I know we're still kind of a narrative, but I keep seeing one of these bullet points in under gameplay, <laughs> and what? it's just MJ with a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> like this needs to be addressed. So we're if you want, we're pretty much there. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, I I didn't even start the game off or start the episode off with what I wanted to talk about, which was the fact that you start this game off fighting Sandman. That's the big focus. It's like when you start so much the game, sand. that's like the the like the cold open of like the the of the Simpsons, like the couch gag or like the fucking office cold open. That's mm-hmm. like the thing you do before the game really starts, just to give you something. You're fighting Sandman, and I'm like, Forward, I like to think Christ that sake. they. <laughs> they saw all the sand games that were happening and they were like, we got to get in on this. I just threw it in there for the intro. I think they do a really good job at balancing a lot of the villains similar to like how the Arkham games do. Like they're just kind of off doing shit, but also just like involved in the world. I like that. There's a lot of really funny segments of, of the villains like turning a new leaf since the first game and just kind of like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a construction dude now. <laughs> and it's like, you used to kill people and be a gangster. And like, <laughs> we're, you're really bad. And he's like, yeah, but you know, um, Johnny's got to move the back home by three. And then I got to get home by four to have dinner. And it's like, okay. Like, this is how, <laughs> this is how it is now. Um, there's that. Uh, MJ, her sections are completely improved since the first game. They are still, <clears throat> like, for the most part, sneak based, but uh, much more action focused. Um, fucking she, shooting people with the Glock. <laughs> early on, she ends up taking from, like, the Hunter Goons uh, and, like, fashioning a taser of sorts. All right. That, that she attached, like, a web shooter to so she can, like, shoot zappy stuff and she you're basically running around and it's like a semi janky third person shooter like kind of sneak sections and they're much more entertaining than they were in the first game it's it's just fun but she she's just there's a lot of memes of her running like mj with the glock like don't like watch out like she's she's so you don't actually have a glock no they didn't you give don't MJ have a, a gun, gun. And, and have her shoot people no <laughs> that's the twist um she's she's she ends up getting a big moment later on after uh, there's there's a whole thing with the symbiotes uh symbiotes symboites 
uh, where people just end up getting it on them. She gets it on them uh, on her at one point, and that's like a big boss fight. She becomes Scream, one of the versions of the symbiotes. Um, like Ghostface? No. No, no, not that one. Like David uh, Arquette? No, 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 no. Not that oh. One. Um, and then, and then you got Harry. He is feeling better and he just wants to be like a better good friend with Pete. And he realizes that the, the suit when it's on him makes him stronger and he becomes like spider lad and is like running around. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have questions. Yeah. Immediately. Why is Harry wearing Peter's suit? So the symbiote is on Harry to start to like heal him. That because yeah. he's sick in the first game. Right. There's the point in the game where the symbiote ends up going to Peter. Okay. Before that happens, Harry still has the symbiote. Right. Right. So when he's talking with Peter, he's like, Peter, look at me and my symbiote. And it forms into this like Spider-Man, like black looking suit. And the the white spider ends up forming like an O on his chest for Osborne. And he basically goes around as like a another sidekick for Peter <laughs> on missions and whatnot. And he like is like little like spider lad, like running around, like just helping out up until the point where it goes up onto Peter. He's just he's just doing that. So Harry knows that Peter is Spider-Man. Yes. OK. Yeah. And like, that's where a lot of the big conflict comes in later with the, you know, not only is Pete acting different with having like the black suit and and the, and the symbiote on him, but you know, it's like, Oh, Harry's back in the picture. You know, Pete's flaking a lot. You know, it's like, he's kind of being a dick about it. It's like, he's never there anymore. Like that kind of stuff. And then it builds up more with the suit. Um, Typical Spider-Man shit. And and here's one of the weird things, and it I don't know if you, you it, when you play it you would notice it. You've only played the third game, but there are certain sections when you're not playing uh, as like the combat like actiony Spider-Man parts where you're just playing as like Peter or Miles or something. There's parts where like you're walking around with Harry as Peter, and like you're just like having a chat, breaking into your old like high school, having a good old convo. And like shooting a basketball, and it feels like the most life is strange ass shit. And it, it, it's oh, okay. Like, that's where the, I was gonna say, what the fuck are you talking about? The third yeah. one, what are you saying? It feels so life is strange in such a specific way. I don't know. And there's like certain music playing in the background, it just feels like you have I, to I, play the games. But it, I get you know, what you're saying, it, it's so weird. Uh, but like, I'm kind of, I, 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 I kind of like games. that. Yeah, like I did. It just felt out of place for a second. I was like, "What yeah. the fuck?" When I made the the realization, at least. Um, and I mean, no, no matter what you're gonna do, I, I'm still not a big fan of the the new Peter face. I'm I'm forced to have it grow on me after playing all this time. But I just it's miss. growing like on your face now. It is the <laughs> symbiote. The pixels are growing on me. <laughs> but it's 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 it's. I miss the OG face. It's still the best. What are you doing? Just don't do that. No, I thought I thought I heard something. Let's see. It didn't. But There's yeah, of... it is that whole thing is like I'm you're you are bothered by it way more than I am, but it is yeah. weird. It's so frustrating, dude. It's the same thing when you get attached to an actor in a show. You but you get attached to that, the face, the person, everything. And then all of a sudden, it's like, no, it's like, well, this is not the same. I am bothered off. way more by that in like movies and TV shows than I am video games. But like, yes, in TV shows and sh- or like or movie when it's a sequel and it's the same character, but it's a completely different actor. That bothers me. I mean, it worked with Don Cheadle, but still. Don't know what you're talking about. You don't? Nope. Don Cheadle wasn't the original Rhodey in Iron Man.
I know it's silent. I'm I'm trying to think about the Iron Man movies. He showed up in Iron Man 2. But he wasn't there in the first one. I didn't even know that that character was in the first one to begin with. That's because in the first one, it was Terrence Howard who played Rhodey. Okay, Iron Man, Terrence <laughs> Howard. <laughs> it's still Marvel related, so it's not off topic. <laughs> well, it, it, it connects. Yeah, I like... Maybe it's because it is just they are like very different looking people. Yeah. That He's like it, completely separate characters. That's yeah. I don't. I think my brain just always assumes that they were different characters. It makes sense, but I mean, it's they're both Rhodey. Interesting. Yep. So speaking of the Spider Verse, there's a couple well, of Spider Verse Iron nods Man, then. as as Sorry. well. There's a bunch of spider bots that pop around that are like part of the big collectibles that you find in the game. And it leads to like this cute little side quest. I never saw Spider-Verse part or like the second one yet. But uh, um, as as you collect all these little like pulses that, that pop up around the city, you find these little spider bots. And there's one of all these different types of Spider-Man characters throughout the different universes, including Spider-Man 2099, Miles Morales, etc. cetera. Um, but you collect all of those and there's like this tiny little cutscene in the middle of this uh, alleyway where it opens up to this like lady at a bar and she just takes all the spiders and is like, thanks for that. It's like, and don't tell Miguel or anything and like, he'll come for you and, and whatnot. What? Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was cute. <laughs> all right. Um, is that, it? is that what the story? Is that all I got to say about the narration? Probably. Oh, there's a bunch of new shit you could do with good old Spider-Man. I think the biggest thing yeah, is the web, web line gadget. You can now shoot a web line from most any place where you're perched to a wall or another location and create a new like diagonal or new directional place to like walk and stay perched. Can you then do the stealth thing where you like make enemies hang from that. That is so useful. And you can do it like consecutively. So from a web line, you can make another web line. That sounds so good. It, it, and later as you progress through one of the, uh, map icons are hunter layers and later on bases after you take down enough layers, the, the layers are pretty average, but the bases are decently sized. So if you want to take out most of it in a stealth form, it really does help and work out to make like multiple and you get a lot of reach o- over the, the section when you're able to do that. But it does make a difference. I, well, yeah, because I do remember like trying to do stealth <sighs> and just in the waiting. other Spider-Man games and you have to just wait in the specific spots to make it happen like that. Yeah, it, this feels much more dynamic in, in what you're able to do to, to make it happen. See, I, I feel like my biggest pitfalls with this game are when it comes to the narrative and, and, and the plot. The The rest of it, I think, is pretty great. Uh, like, the web line's great. The web wings are fantastic. Uh, when you're playing uh, with the new, like, Mr. Negative-infused Miles Powers uh, and, like, when you're actually as Venom and have the symbiote on you, I don't like Mr. Negative as a name. I just keep like Mr. Negative with Miles. I'm just picturing it as being like, this sucks. Spider Man <laughs> sucks. Oh, man. Your job's stupid. Oh, I hate it. You don't <laughs> yeah, even get minimum all... wage. St- stinky. <laughs> Ewy. I can't. Mr. Negative. I can't. They, that's I, what he is. They got to retcon that. I, bad, ha- unhappy boy. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't think that's any better emotion a little better better i like it um let's see and when you're playing as venom you have like <clears throat> like the the general the symbiote has like the the strands where it webs out you do like these this whiplash and like pick up a bunch of enemies at once and slam them to the ground you can send out a big like pulse where it just shoots a lot of it and b- bulges out gets nice and thick um whoa and takes out an enemy there's you can activate like the special venom 
ability where you just kind of go all out and basically every third attack is like a cutscene takedown where it just takes out another enemy very useful when big big mobs are around um and then it's interesting interestingly enough uh the little tool wheel is gone and you only have like four or five to play with completely reduced i think that's fine because i feel like that's about what i was using anyway and the other things i just wasn't touching i don't think it's too too big of a deal in the grand scheme of things but i it makes no sense to me and i hate when games have things in a previous game and have the resources and they don't bring them back well maybe it was just peter simply saying wow i have all these gadgets that i never use i should i should not do i should save some space yeah you could just whatever and just say it's a peter got there's like a cutscene where it's like a big caption peter got smarter and reinvented all of his shit and now he doesn't yes. his, his pockets are lighter Ta-da! <laughs> and then he went to jail for 20 years okay um so we have the ricochet webs uh that those shoot off enemies and bounces off and strikes other enemies can hit up to a couple of them uh i feel like the two i use the most were upshot and web grabber upshot sends a few enemies just kind of straight up into the air after it kind of hits all the enemies all these little tools hit all the enemies like a little bit like like one punch worth in a way and then like do what they're intended to do and then web grabber sends out directional webs and brings enemies into a cluster kind of like brings them together there's also concussion burst and that sends out a massive blast which stuns enemies hey what you got a little i think you got a little upshot on your face How 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 did that happen? No, 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 it's the wrong it's the wrong word. No. Is it right next to the updog? <laughs> I didn't know you knew about the updog. It's yeah. Oh yeah, I've had right that there. for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I think I appreciate. Um but besides that, I mean, when it comes to the abilities, you get to fuck around with a bunch of skills. There are three separate skill trees in a way. There's a Miles skill tree, a Peter mm. skill tree, and a Miles and Peter skill tree. <laughs> are those for just like combo moves and stuff? It's like uh, anything you do in the Miles and Peter will affect both Spider-Man and it. Oh, yeah. So it'll okay. uh, it, it, it'll do like i don't know maybe it'll get bigger jumps or f- faster swinging or like stronger this or certain moves that and makes like sense each especially specifically will go yeah we'll go and each specific will go into like their you know uh miles's venom uh, like shock and whatever powers and peter has his like the the spider arms that come out and also the venom abilities that you can upgrade um <clears throat> i feel like besides that there's just a bunch of stuff going on on the map i mean just like any other spider-man or ubisoft game is just icon ridden uh it is but i didn't mind it in the spider-man games i think it's because it was a relatively small area you're working with yeah not like this huge map yeah it's it's I, it's it doesn't feel like much has changed in that way because not only like the map is bigger and there's more to do, but your traversal is also um, not only faster, but your options are much greater because you have the web wings, uh, different ways to like get higher and go faster. Uh, the web swinging in general, there's, there's some new things that you can do that are fun. You can not only in the settings turn down, uh, all, like swing assist and like make it more challenging. Oh, like I've seen some to... of these things. Yeah, there's there's some really funny videos out there that they make it like you could hit the ground more often if you're not actually like attaching to things that you can stick to and focusing on like where you're swinging around. Yeah, that the like super like the realistic physics mode or whatever. Yeah, um, but there's also a new one that you can do that's a whole bunch of fun uh, when 
Uh, you are doing like the clicking R3, I think it is, and doing the downfall, and you were to swing mm. from that, it you can just go in a loop and then just go in a spiral and then just let go at any point and get super far. You have a lot of trajectory. Uh, That's and fun. you can also s- slingshot yourself from any point in the map. You just attach to two buildings or two items, and then you bring yourself back, and then just and then just start swinging from there after giving yourself a big jump start. With uh, certain sections around the map, they give you an even bigger slingshot boost that are like specifically meant to either like get you across the water or just get you further across a certain part of the map. Those are a lot of fun. What happens to all of his webs? So, in supposedly they. Uh, they're made with a certain thing that like disintegrates over time, like whatever. Like it, mm, it convenient. It it's compost and like just kind of disappears. I always think about that, and, and you have that, but then you think about it when it comes to Batman and all of his grapples. That's just that's just metal <laughs> and 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 you know rope. And that's but I also just think about everywhere. Arkham, and Arkham seems like just kind of dark and fucked up anyway. But imagine like go like imagine getting home from in Gotham, and like you just wanna, uh, it's not like you have much anyway, and you just wanna relax, have a beer, and look out your window, and there's like forty ropes just swinging in the wind, and you can't see shit because there's so many ropes hanging off your building blocking your view. Why do people willingly live in Gotham? It's cheap. Huh, that's that's a good reason. It's cheap. That's yeah, that'll do it. Um, so using a lot of those uh, different traversal methods will make it a lot faster when it comes to going across not only all of the collectibles but a lot of the side stuff. Uh, just absolutely littering the map. Um, collecting collectibles and completing certain activities will award you with tokens that will have uh access to gain you suits as you level up throughout the game you can buy suits and uh upgrade not only your little web tools but just different aspects and unlock uh custom or not custom but alternate versions of the suits that you can unlock uh but as you progress in a certain district around the map uh you'll get more rewards whether it's certain rare tokens or the ability the second reward in every district is always the ability to fast travel to that district so you have to complete stuff in the area in order to be able to fast travel there did you hate that not really i i i find the, the side activities in this game in the first one very enjoyable when it came to i mean just the swinging and the combat was fun enough it just wanted me to keep playing so i did i platinum the game and i had a lot of fun so not at all i had a good time doing them um but let's start uh hunter layers we talked about that these are like your um what were they in the first game those were all those like uh was it was it uh, i'm drawing a huge blank fisk fisk towers those those uh mm. where it's just the waves of enemies these yeah. are kind of like those uh they're the hunters have these drones that fly around like these hawk drones that that can be frustrating and shoot at you there's the enemies are really beefy uh they have a bunch of weapons and shields kind of slightly upgraded from the enemies that you've seen in the first game and then as you do enough of the hunter layers, you'll unlock the big bases around the map. And you got to take those out. And those are, are a huge ordeal. And that is where my biggest issue playing with the game came in, is that you already have to go through and do like maybe three to five of these hunter layers before you can unlock like the big base. And the big base alone can take anywhere from 20 plus minutes up. That's a long time. being like stealthy and you're trying to complete stuff. I did it three times because every single time, the first two times I did it, the last enemy, whether it was like one of the robot dogs or just a human enemy, got stuck behind a wall. And there was nothing that I could do to take him out. No webs, no shooting, no attacks, no nothing. That's Twice, back to back. 
So I, I stopped and I played a whole bunch of the rest of the game and I finally came back to it and I, I got it. But that, that really, really after like, cause I did it and then I did it again immediately after I was like, all right, that pissed me off, mm-hmm. but I'm going to get it now. And then I did it again. So there was like almost an hour gone of just waste. And I was just beyond pissed. I probably stopped playing for that night. But like that shit was frustrating. I was glad I was able to fix it or get get past it. I don't know if I just beat the enemies faster or whatever I did. But that shit, that shit was bad. Yeah, that's that's not good. <clears throat> I mentioned before the spider bots. You collect those, and those are <clears throat> they have a couple of those little sections. Uh, for miles, there are certain, like I mentioned before, side activities that can only be accessed by a certain Spider Man. Miles has Prowler stashes. His uncle comes back into the picture, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. not really Prowler anymore, but I got a whole bunch of stashes <laughs> everywhere. If you want to go, like, take all the stuff that I had in them, so you go do that." There's this new, um, sort of ocular upgrade that he gives you for your visor that can sense certain patches that you need to focus on that'll help you start the puzzle of like pulling something out shooting it with webs and opening doors to be able to get to his stash uh the gene splicer is done by peter you go around for the uh emily may foundation which is a like is Aunt May's first name <clears throat> Emily? No. So it's a foundation that was founded by Harry uh, under Aunt May and Emily Osborne, his mom. Mm. Um, and it's like they, they just want to change the world. So like they just do everything. They have a big park like Accelerator and like they do stuff with plants and they want to cure the cancer and do all the shit and just save the world. Um. But a lot of the stuff that you do and like the side for them have to do with plants and bees. You do some of these things where you're just going around getting these seeds and stuff and culminating these plants and figuring out where they're growing around this um, uh, building. And then you take the the how they're combined, like their their molecule makeup, and you have to take out all like the little bad viruses and stuff and have like a complete structure. Uh, of, is it of, like, similar to the mini game that was in the first one where you're like he would like look into it like it's not telesc- not a telescope it's, but it's yeah it's not the same you're not like matching up little things you're kind of like okay. taking away parts that shouldn't be there in hopes that they don't take away other parts that should be there because you need a certain amount of each of the molecules to add up it's it's similar to like that sort of style of like just like nerdy like sciencey mini game but it plays a little differently and much more fun. The other f- more more fun side of these more side more. missions are the ones where they're focused on bees and they have these bee drones. So you're kind of just first person flying around this drone and just going to different areas for tracking, flying it around and shooting these AR wasps that are supposed to be the enemies of the bees. And like you're just okay. collecting data on bees. Okay. So that's, that's that. <laughs> sure. Uh, there's Marco's memories. Uh, after you kind of take down Sandman in the beginning, he goes off to a mental institute and he's like freaking out. Um, <laughs> you find these. It sounds like it sounds like the the Marco that we used to know, right? <laughs> you he, the good good old days. He's like, "Where's my daughter?" Um, I so don't know what you're talking about now. He, that's his whole thing. He wants his daughter. That's I don't know if thing. I've ever heard that from him. I just remember him playing air guitar. What? Have you, in Spider-Man 3? That's not... I was talking about Marco. Marco, Marco. Uh, Marco in the town that we would work in. Oh, uh, <laughs> Marco. I'm talking about that one. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, who the fuck? Oh, I didn't, re- I didn't know we were getting real. For a second, we got we were getting real for a second. No, not as crazy as that, Marco. <clears throat> so as as you're going around the map, you'll find certain sections uh, that are just the tops of buildings and areas are completely covered in sand, and you have to take out a couple sand enemies. And uh, 
there are these crystals that you find and you break them open and they're Marco's memories of like, you know, he's starting to like get his memory back. Every time you break open those, a crystal, those hot like riffs he would do with his air back. guitar all the time. <laughs> you know, my father's name was Dave. <laughs> How many times I've heard that? Yeah, man. He's scary. So you fight, you, you fight down all these sand people, you get the crystals, and as you, you break them apart and you get more of his memories, he starts to become sane again, and you get calls throughout the game, and it's like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but it's working. Like, just everybody's like, he's getting, he's talking again. He's, he's eating solid foods. This is good. He's doing good right now. So the, the game, like, uh, sprinkled in just some sand segments throughout. Yep. Sand, just to sand, make sure sand. you kept your fill of sand going and i did all of them <laughs> i did all the sand segments i did not 100 percent or platinum the game but i did all the sand i did it. i think it's funny that it really picked up like the second half of this year yeah for you where that is just events it's just been sand nonstop. i don't understand why all the games that just sounded semi-interesting had sand Either you were either either someone else was covering the game or something else, but sand, 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 sand. Let's see. Uh, there's also photo ops. You're you're going back with the camera. You're you're taking pictures of just moments and things happening around the city. Uh, Robbie Robertson uh, is is the. <laughs> Is a real dude in game. <laughs> That's his name, Robbie Robertson. I think I think he works for. I don't know if it's the the bugle or if it's for like his own personal thing, but he wants you to take photos of just like the stuff around the city. Like Robbie things Robertson, are, things that are happening. Oh, it's a Canadian musician. Oh, look at that. Uh, are him and Bob Dylan friends? They're lifelong friends. Whoa. I don't know. Spider Man. Oh, what? hey, I know that guy in the movies. Who What's is he that? in the movies? He he was just he was uh like just a guy at the bugle. He I don't really remember. He he would like sometimes he was like the more serious guy that would when when, when they would talk it with Jay Jonah. Yeah. Oh. I never knew his name. <laughs> oh, well, hold on. Now, apparently he's Joseph Robbie Robertson. Ooh. And now okay. I'm getting upset again. Whatever, bro. Um. Let's see. There's a bunch of side quest stuff. Um, uh, both Peter has like friendly neighborhood Spider-Man requests that people send in through the app that he can do. Um, there's a whole Carnage side quest that's like the beginning of Carnage that if they do like DLC stuff would probably be like a DLC. Um, Miles has like side quests involving the, the, the school that he goes to is like Brooklyn Visions, I think. What is is Carnage not Venom? The symbiote in this game acts differently depending on who it's attached to, but in like I think the main canon there's numerous there's like thirteen different main ones. So like there's Carnage, there's Venom, there's Scream, there's this, there's that, there's the other thing. Whoa. There's like a there's a bunch of them. And there's like a whole god. I don't know. It, it goes real deep in the comics. Oh, well, I don't like Scream. Oh, did you look it up? Yeah, Scream's scary. Yeah. Uh, you remember I mentioned earlier how like some of the villains are just kind of like doing random shit. Like, like, do you remember Tombstone in the first game? Hmm, let's see. Spider-Man game Tombstone. He's like a janitor slash like carnival ride operator. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, in this game, Mysterio's here and he does like side show attractions. He has like this this thing called a Mysterium where you walk inside and it's like an AR room and it's like super trippy. But the problem is that people keep getting stuck 
in the <laughs> like whatever illusion that he's doing. So, so Miles has to go and save them. Is this one of those things where like Mysterio in this in the game world has like already been defeated at some point? I believe so now, because like, as evil. of right now, his whole focus is opening up more franchises. Okay, so he's not evil, he's just greedy. No, he's like, oh my god, people keep getting stuck in my Mysteriums. How am I going to open up one in Chinatown? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got it. He's just a businessman now. Yeah, he's panicking. He's like, my stock prices are going down. Like, this is the worst <laughs> thing that's ever happened to me. I have so many other locations already waiting to be opened and people keep getting stuck. He's like, the code isn't done yet, Miles. I need you to go save them while they're while they're operating on the code on the inside. It's ridiculous. He's uh, scummy, but not evil. Yeah. The, there's a symbiote nest later on in the game. Those are just more like big spots where you're just fighting, just taking away enemies. Uh, and then unidentified target drones. These are like the hunter drones, uh, Craven's drones that have like targets that they're going to assassinate. And you need to stay in Whoa. their trail. What? Wait a second here. Yeah, these are just random people. Okay, so he's very... And when I was talking about Craven before, I was just picturing him like, he just wants a strong adversary to fight, and now we have assassinating drones. Well, who knows what his lackeys are up to. <laughs> All right. So what you gotta do is you gotta, like, web wing and swing in, like, the trail that it's leaving to download its data before taking it out. It was decently fun. Sounds like a good amount of side stuff. It's it's definitely there's there's a lot to it and it's much more enjoyable I'd say than what was given in the first game, which the first game was already fun. It sounds more varied. Definitely, and I think the first game had like its set amount of activities and those repeated a lot. Yeah, this this had a lot of good deviation with stuff and and was like do a lot of stuff here, do a lot of stuff there, bounce around over here, do this there stuff. As you progress through the game, even up to like late game stuff was unlocking to like do in maps. Like you couldn't just like start off from mission five and go hundred percent the map. Cool. But besides that, that's like the main Spider Man two. Definitely leading up to Spider Man three, another cutscene at the end. Sure. I mean that's it's not surprising. But I don't know. I think I we're like gonna be seeing Spider Man for a while. Absolutely. I mean, we're probably gonna get another mid middle spin off game again. Whatever. I don't know. Or just big DLC. Something. Well, if Miles is gonna be the guy, then maybe it'll be Spider Man Peter Parker. <sighs> Could be. But it'll just be him like retired. Yeah, he's just like doing puzzles. Yeah. Doing puzzles, making tea. Uh, but I feel like I'd overall give it a a, a good old eight. Definitely, definitely, it's still a solid Spider-Man experience. I feel like it l is lacking when it comes to the narrative portion. Uh, but I don't, and I besides the, that one main technical issue that I ha had with the dude yeah. uh, getting stuck in the wall, um, pretty, pretty much just positive things to say. Just another good old game. Definitely short, shorter than the first one, even with, with doing uh, side stuff. I I wanted when when it comes to games that I like having the focus on them specifically. I I like them to be I like to put more time into them. I'm not necessarily hopping into a game like hoping it's another ten hour experience. Just be like, oh, thank God, in in the sea of all these other stuff. They're the games I, that I want to be long. Yes, but I also think it's just where my head is at lately with just how much free time I don't have. Yeah, when I find out a game is that long, I'm like. Yeah, good. Nice, tight experience. I can enjoy it and finish it and not feel guilty about a game that's a million hours long with five hours in it. Hey, Dylan, you could beat Assassin's Creed Mirage in 15 hours if you want to do. <gasps> I, that that does sound good, but I don't think I'm gonna. Well, not at, this at, point. at some point. Not not before our Game of the Year chats. Yeah, there have been games that you've been saying that you've been gonna play at some point. That was five, six years ago. Yeah, then I decided to just take on a million other things that take away from gaming time. You know. Me too. <laughs> Besides that, it really isn't much notable game releases coming out. No, we got nothing the, for you. The big the old most notable game release will be our game of the year next week. 
that is that is going to be the most notable release and i'm very excited to get into top tens figuring out what everything else is going to be and just seeing seeing who's going to buckle <laughs> who's the you, weakest link you look like the buckling type i don't i don't buckle. you got rocky knees my knees are just fine my you ankle f- on the other hand has you been f- bad for like half a year dylan you fin a buckle in a breeze that sounds sounds kind of racist for some reason. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Sounds like something that shouldn't be said. <laughs> Either way, you're going down. <laughs> sure, sure thing, buddy. All right. Thank you, everyone, Ow. for listening. Dylan, Dylan, Why? roll credits. Um, how do I do that? I don't know. You know what to say. I no, I don't. I never. You always end the episodes. I don't no. know anything to say. All right, guys, please like, please subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, That's, Amazon, we whatever do that you're at the listening beginning, to. and we no, didn't. We say th- you didn't. You didn't at all. This is that's no. why I'm giving you your job. Uh, okay, I could do that. That oh I can goodness. do. That's and right. we say thank you. We say thank you at the end. We do. We definitely do that. This is my first day. What happened? Come on, man. This is why. This is why you'll never be Dave. <laughs> it's all. Oh, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Then, <laughs> if you enjoyed any part of this, and you're listening on any of the podcast platforms, or you're watching our faces on YouTube, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Please like. Please follow on the podcast apps, whatever one you're listening to us on. That's the stuff that helps us. There, I did it. It means a lot. Just like your effort, Dylan. Oh, I just showed up. Me too. Thanks, Dave. We, we swing away. Thanks, Lyle. Thanks, Lyle. Jeez.